What's going on, everybody? Well, tonight I'm having some Brazilian dry process Santa Ines. Inez. Santa, somebody. In my snowflake mug. Yeah, I got two or three of these Christmas themed mugs. Well, let's have a sip. Mmm. Good coffee. I call it a very bold coffee. This dry process Brazilian is can be roasted at a city plus to full city plus. And this one I actually did take to a full city plus. It also said this is good for espresso and I can see why. Now what I did is I, I haven't got my roaster that I purchased online yet. Um, but what I did do this weekend is uh, I got impatient. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so I made my own roaster. Yes, I did. Let me show you. Using the rotisserie attachment to my baby George Foreman, I made my own roasting basket. I had some stainless steel had for years. Um, see, I kind of, the cutting wasn't perfect, but hey, it's all right. So, I put this together this weekend. I started doing, uh, playing with the roasting, and it really was more about getting to learn the, my equipment. Um, more than actually just roasting coffee, to, to, to roast coffee. Um, Finding the method, or finding the proper methods and locations of temperature sensor uh, was very important, and that's why I did this. Plus, I did want to roast coffee. <laughs> you know, let's just not pretend. But, it, it was really a really good process, because what it let me do is see... Um, what worked and what didn't work and one thing that i've figured out is is for at least for now where to place my sensor my meat probe thermometer where to put it and i'll put a picture in here in just a second to show you where i put it um, i did try a bunch of different things i tried hanging it from the top tried putting it from the bottom i tried having it laying over the top of the roaster like this as it turned it would have tension on it so it would keep it in place but that was it was more of a task to keep pulling the wire pulling it back in place and it needed a stationary place um i put it on the side at the end of the roaster that didn't work this is about the only good place it um, um, it would work it was near where the beans were and i actually need to move it forward so that i can roll the beans away from uh from the heat source if, if you were the heat source i would want it rolling like this at least that's why i would try it So I got that figured out, and I figured out that my Frizzoni is not a good device to use this with because it only updates about every three seconds, and it will only do two degrees at a time. Uh, it's it's a good product, but not you know for a permanent solution for temperature sensing for this. It's just the the the, the sample rate and. Um, it's just not good enough. It's just flat not good enough. Um, which it wouldn't be bad. To me, two seconds is not bad, or three seconds is not bad, but it, if it would only change two degrees at a time, even if you hit, you know, I even tried hitting it with a heat gun, two degrees at a time, what do you do? So, figured out where to put my temperature sensor, figured out just the accoutrements I need. Uh, 
this little this come with it, the George Foreman. You know, if you do it a chicken, you can take it out. Uh, it, it's not bad, but it's, you know, yeah, you know. I also learned that the difference between a just a regular kitchen glove and a good pair of welding gloves, which is about ten, twelve dollars, much better. You need to break these in, though, because uh, they're they're tight at first, like they should be. But you really need to break them in. And if you're going to buy these, then you know buy them days, weeks ahead of time, and just put them on and use them, because they they need to fit like a glove, you know, so you can articulate your fingers very well in these thick welding gloves. And these help. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Man, that coffee's coming back on me. But they will burn you. <laughs> It'll burn you. Uh, if you, especially these thick metal pieces, it will, it'll get you. But it, it burn you in the sense of, you know, not a first degree burn, but you can feel the heat for sure. Um, what else? What else? Um, roasting inside. In a, in a non windy environment, that was one thing I tried roasting outside, even in a light wind. The uh, it, it's not that it caused problems, uh, it's just that for this piece of equipment, it caused problems because uh, um, it, you know, you're using every single bit of the insul insulative properties of this George Foreman. For sure to get that temperature up <laughs> excuse me here having a little sip mm. yeah that's very full body um the what else oh um uh, my beans i've made this video about three times so forgive me if i've <laughs> repeated but um uh, i'll show you when i when i when i kind of went through a couple little batches I decided to make my first roast, or at least first roast that I recorded. Um, this was what I recorded here. And um, I'll put a picture in here. What you're going to see on the left is two rows of, um, two rows and four, excuse me, Two row, two columns, and four rows on the left are this Brazil right after they've been roasted. The right is Starbucks French roast, um, and the the color is about the same. And I took that just to document, you know, the color. Uh, of the roast right after I did it, but the way these are coming out now, and I know you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm just going to look at it. They, the oils have come to the top of the bean. Uh, they do have an, an oil shimmer on them. Um, really dark brown. Really dark brown. And the, the flavor has developed over a few days. Uh, I have noticed that. I've had cup, uh, one or two cups. And uh, it's just been a real fun process trying to find the right what to do what not to do uh if i can even have i have a little fan over here which i use as a it's a little honeywell fan i use as a cooling tray uh not the fan of the tray but i'll put a picture in right here so that's what i used as my cooling apparatus but i can also use it as to try to control temperature if i need to at least that's the thought process of maybe getting that temperature down or keeping it down uh, just as a, a um, uh, another way to control the temperature in the in the roaster but haven't got to that point yet it's not really that hot where I need that airflow across it yet but there is I don't think I've forgotten anything um, I think that's about it the uh, oh the ray gun the ray gun worked pretty good it worked, it, it would work pretty good at toward the end where it kind of got some processes worked through um, it did good for what it can do 
you know, I know it's not going to be bean mass temperature. Uh, what I mean by that is by having a temperature sensor in contact with the beans, that's coming. That's going to be a mod I'm going to make to, I hope to make to my roaster, which I'm going to get Tuesday. Um, but, you know, this worked pretty good. It, it at least gave me a reference point for things, you know, that, and that, and that's important, you know, when you, when you're, can't have exactly what you want but keeping the baby george foreman lid open about yay much shooting it in there kind of taking about a half average temp worked okay so anyway there's a little documentary of what i've done so far uh, maybe i'll put a few more pictures in here uh see see what i have <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks for coming along with me on this roasting adventure. There's more to come. <laughs> See y'all later. Bye.